Welcome to On The Line. Today, I got a pretty special guest. He is a fullback for the Minnesota Vikings. I am joined by Jake Vargas. So first question I want to ask is, so you grew up in Florida. You played college football in North Carolina. And then you get signed by the Minnesota Vikings. And not and you're up there in the middle of the fall and the winter. So kind of how is that kind of how you adjusted to the Midwestern winter? You know, I like the Midwest. My mom's from Flint, Michigan. So we got some Midwest in the fam. Um, it's definitely the furthest north I've ever been. So growing up in Florida, I grew up by the beach, by the water. So I headed to North Carolina. It wasn't too cold. And then get signed by Minnesota. I'm like, wow, I'm really going north. But it was a great place. I really enjoyed it up there. Um, the winter is pretty cold. Definitely can say now I've experienced uh, real cold. So it was a lot of fun, though. No complaints. I really enjoyed it. It's a good group of guys up there. Oh, yeah. And it's a great city, too. It's a really nice city. Yeah, great spot. Oh, yeah. So you've so real talk, though, you've been through kind of a crazy journey. Um, I mean, you signed North Carolina. You're tight end there. And then the Vikings sign you as a fullback. So kind of what's that transition been like, especially in the middle of probably the weirdest kind of offseason in NFL history? Yeah, offseason was wild. Definitely chaotic. So, um, yeah, COVID hit. I, I was training at UNC, finishing up my degree, um, came home for spring break, and then COVID hit. So I couldn't go back to finish my training. So I trained down in South Florida, um, just kind of waiting. Hopefully we can go back for pro day. Pro day got canceled. I wasn't invited to the combine. I'm like, damn, all odds <laughs> against me. So I was like, let's just put together a video, send it to all 32 NFL teams with my agent. Did that, got the call after the draft from the Vikings. Um, and then the rest is history. So it was pretty cool, crazy, crazy uh, off season, kind of getting picked up. But, you know, no one cares really. You know, I mean, it's just crazy world we live in. Um, stuff was happening all over the world. People were dying. So just just was lucky that I got an opportunity to play more ball. I was excited about that. Oh, yeah. Did, uh, was it the Vikings was the first team to call you? And you're like, yep, I'm in right away. Yeah. Like, I mean, talked to a few teams. The Vikings were the first team that like really called after. I had a good relationship with them and I was on board. I kind of liked their um, offense in terms of like how they use the fullback. So I was like, this is a perfect fit. I um, got to go learn from a guy named CJ Ham and All-Pro. Um, and got to just kind of hope I can just follow in his footsteps, keep learning from him and, and block for the guys and guys behind me. So, I mean, they cool, produced man. another really fullback has... before they got you too. So I, I, it's kind yeah, of, uh, Kari. Yeah. So he's a stud. He's, he's with the Titans now. I, I got to, I got to uh, meet him, talk to him. Um, he made the, he made the transition from running back. I made it from tight end. So a little different. Um, and then on your question about the transition, the transition was crazy. I mean, never was in the backfield. I wasn't, I haven't been in the backfield since high school. So the high school, the NFL, let's just say it's a little different in terms oh, just, of just a tad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So making the transition was a lot of fun though, man. It, it taught me a lot about ball, um, gave me a whole new kind of perspective on football and kind of how to read the field. So I've really enjoyed it. It was just kind of the first few months, just, I'm used to being in that three point stance, kind of motioning around in the backfield, but not really like down in the dirt, like let's grind, you know, but it was fun. <laughs> nice you read it like the runner. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you read it like the runner and, and I got, I got great running backs behind me who are going to make good plays off the blocks. And that's, that's all you can do, man. So that's all, that's all you really good. can do. What did yeah. you play in high school? Were you a, uh, were you running back in high school? Uh, I played, uh, I mean, I played it all, whatever they needed me. I, I played utility guy. Utility guy, right? Exactly. Wherever coach wanted me, I, I could play that for you. Okay. All right. So you also kind of had a pretty cool like NFL debut. On Christmas Eve, you get a phone call from Red Nose Mike Zimmer. <laughs> the next day, you're playing on Christmas Day. Like, kind of what was going through that? You know, I was ready every week. I prepared like I was going to play. So with COVID, I traveled every game. Okay. Um, and in case anybody was like on the close COVID like protocol list, like I had to be ready to play, ready to go. So I prepared every week like I was going to play. Um, but I mean, what a Christmas present. Christmas Day, I'm like, let's ride. We're active now. 53 man roster um, in the Superdome. So it was pretty cool, man. Definitely surreal and a dream come true. Just getting the opportunity to go out there and finally um, put my preparation to work. Like every every week you're out there battling. It's like, damn, I want to play. I want to play. I finally got oh, yeah. the opportunity. It's like, let's go. So. I got I got a taste of it now. I'm ready for year two. Oh, Looking yeah. forward to what it has in store. And you get a preseason, so you get to play even more minutes, yeah, get some more experience exactly. in that fullback position. Yeah, exactly. No preseason last year was a bummer, but I mean camp was fun. It was just like we were everybody was really working out of a season. I'm like, at least we get to be here and get to play. So oh, that yeah. was cool. 
Oh yeah, for sure. And then, uh, what was it? You also got to play in one of the few games you guys actually had fans. So that had been pretty. Yeah, cool there too. were a, there were a couple. Yeah, just a few, just a few. Couldn't <laughs> imagine what it would be like when it's when it's filled up. Full Superdome. So. You can't even hear a thing. Can't hear couldn't even imagine. You. Yeah, <laughs> Kirk screaming imagine. back at you. You're like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Now as a fullback, this is kind of the last question I have on the NFL fullback situation. I'm going to give you a proposition. It's fuck, Mary kill. So you either get to de a defender, score a touchdown, or get a fullback assist. Fullback assist, huh? Mm-hmm. So, okay, so it was de a defender, score a TD, or fullback assist. Yeah. There is a right I answer. Mean, there's, of course, there's a right answer. I mean, you got as a fullback, you got to go with the fullback assist. Yes, you got it. You got it. You got to marry the fullback assist. Uh huh. You know, selfless guy. That's kind of your job on the team. Yeah. Um. You know, I think I might have to take the touchdown next. <laughs> marry the touchdown. I, yeah, I think I think the fullback assist can you you could declete somebody with a fullback assist. You can kind of like link thinking. those two together. Like you know, you got it. Oh, you yeah. like that? Highlight real then, assist. Yeah. Yeah. And then declete. You know, I don't want to declete anybody. You might get fined to your game check and definitely like hoping to keep those dollars. So I might have to <laughs> kill the declete. <laughs> not trying to lose any money here, you know? No, but, not at all. Yeah. I think that's what I would go with. That would be my theory. Okay. And so going back to college, when you were a tight end, your first catch was kind of special. Want to kind of walk us through what happened there? Um, first catch, first catch. Oh, it's first catch versus Illinois. <laughs> First, yeah. uh, first Illinois. I thought the first catch so, was the Hail Mary. That was my first touchdown. Oh, that was first my touchdown. Crazy walk story. Okay, so first catch was wild too. I'll tell you this story. So I'm in there as a I'm in there as a pup, um, and they call a play. It's like third and long. Uh, Mitch lets one fly. It bounces off Ryan Switzer. I happen to be like <laughs> close enough. I just jump down, catch the ball, <laughs> roll over, get the first. My first catch was literally a deflection off somebody else. Pretty epic. That's pretty um, crazy. But the, <laughs> but the first touchdown was all time. So my buddy, Manny Miles, um, Les Miles' son, he's one of my best friends from North Carolina, he came in for the Hail Mary. Um, I was in, had my buddy next to me. It's like just a classic tip drill. You know, we, we Crazy to say it, but like we would practice that weekly in practice. We'd be like, all right, let's just. Uh, I'm not sure. Every, that. Yeah. Let's just. Everybody runs down. Let's throw one up. Hope somebody gets it. Most of the time, let's just say it wasn't me catching it. <laughs> so, were you the guy I mean, tipping it to the other side? Tipping yeah, it to one or trying to tip it, right? Yeah. So, I'm like, all right, well, I'm never going to see this coming if I catch it. So, run down, it gets tipped up, happens to fall in my hands. Manny let one fly, and it happened to fall in my hands. Was able to make the play, bring it down versus, I think it was Western Carolina. But it was pretty cool, pretty special moment. Got to celebrate with all my buddies. Um, didn't score too many TDs, but that one was definitely special. It was definitely yeah, that's pretty, the, That's one of the coolest. Yeah, one of the there. coolest. Definitely one of my favorite memories of college ball. Oh, it has to be. I mean, that's kind of that's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing almost. Yeah, that one or probably beating Florida State. Beat Florida State, snap their 22-game win streak. Oh, yep, um, yep, I yeah. Yeah, that. that was sweet. So that was definitely my favorite memory <laughs> so still. would that be your favorite? Going back, looking at college, was that probably your most satisfying victory? Was that snapping the 22 streak? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, beating Florida State and then Nick Weiler, the kicker, just chopping down the sideline, just rubbing it in everybody's face. I was on the field for that too, so it was pretty special. And You're just chirping just, over at the Florida State sideline. Yeah, line. getting back on the bus and getting and taking the flight back home to Chapel Hill. It was had been a rowdy ride. Remarkable. Yeah, it was a rowdy ride and let's just say a rowdy <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can only yeah. imagine that. So who threw a better ball then, Mitch or uh or or uh Les Miles kid? Uh, they, both threw a great, they both, they threw, both a threw a great ball. ball. Yeah, they both threw a great ball. I, I, I like to see them two argue that. <laughs> I'd yeah. say, I mean, I'd, I would go Mitch just because I think Mitch needs a couple. He, he needs some positives here. He needs to, he needs to get that confidence. Uh, he's, about, he's about to ball out this year. I got all, I got all my faith in, in Hey, Mitch. If, Josh, if Josh goes out, Mitch is going to throw for like 400 yards. No doubt. Oh, yeah. It's a Mitch wrench tour. No doubt. Oh, yeah. So let's go back then to high school. And so I kind of doing my research, it kind of seemed as if you're almost more interested in basketball at the beginning and then kind of transition into football. Um, so, and you're also an all state lacrosse player. So how did you kind of figure what time, when did you realize, Oh, I can do something in football. Like I can, you know, go, you know, I just growing up, 
Uh, my parents encouraged me to just play to all sports. I played it all. You know, I felt like that kind of helped me become a better athlete, just diversifying what sport I played. I liked going from one sport to the next. I just love competing, man. I really loved it. Um, but start basketball was my first love. Growing up, played AAU and, and USSA, all that stuff. Traveled mm. around. Um, played lacrosse, too. And I, I didn't pick up football until, like, seventh or eighth grade i, I didn't really? really play competitively yeah i picked it up real late like my first real year was like my freshman year i really started taking it serious um but i committed as a freshman to the university of michigan that played was there. something I'm else just, was to bring up what'd you commit yeah, to them for my brother played there so he played there and then my my mom went there my grandparents went there a lot of legacy at the university of michigan so oh. once they offered me i was like let's go i was 15 <laughs> years old you tell me i could come to the university of michigan i was all in um and and it still got a lot of love for the wolverines but pretty much some offers started to fall in for football and it's kind of a partial ride versus a free ride and i was like well i mean i can play in front of ten thousand people or sixty thousand people like in big games and you know i was like you know what i think this is what i want to do i think i want to try to play big time college football so i I went to i went to go play in the acc and it was best decision i ever made man Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, look where you're, you're in the NFL now. Worked out. And so before you committed to North Carolina, it you worked were also, out. Yeah, <laughs> it did work out. I mean, most football players don't make it to the NFL. Yeah, you're one of the select few. Yeah, definitely fortunate. Definitely. And so yeah, and so you were originally committed to Wake Forest, and then you decommitted and went to North Carolina. Was it one of those things like a last minute offer came in from NC, or kind of like a little reservation kind of yeah. thing? <laughs> I mean, I always wanted to go to Michigan. That was like my dream school. Um, but I Duke offered me like early on, and I I was just kind of was like, damn, maybe I should go to Duke. Maybe I should go to Duke. I was and so I decommitted from Michigan, thinking I'm going to commit to Duke. Yeah, they didn't happen to honor my scholarship. I ended up taking another kid. No hard feelings. And then it was like just recruiting. Like, oh, I need to fill up a spot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I liked Wake. I liked Coach Clawson, and I thought that was a good fit at the time. And Later on in my recruiting, North Carolina came by. This guy named Seth Luttrell. Um, he's at North Texas now. Love that guy. He came in my house, and, you know, he just he sold me the dream, and it really was, man. He wasn't wrong, and I, and I made the decision to flip and go to North, North Carolina. I got some of my best friends for life from there and just had just had an unbelievable experience. You know, I even came back for a fifth year and had to do a little victory lap. So, oh, you have, you have, yeah, you have, you have you to. Got to. There's <laughs> you no have rush, to. right? Yeah, no, no, no rush. rush. Especially when you're playing football, you're in no rush. Yeah, I was in no rush, so that's right. That's where I that's where I landed, and it, and it worked out. So at North Carolina, so your your victory lap year, did you take like were you trying to get your master's degree, or were you taking a bunch of like Joe classes, like Matt Lyon? No, no, yeah, classes? no. I, I mean, I I don't, I don't, don't you can't hate on the dancing classes. I, I no, you can't. My brother dance. did that, and he said I, it was awesome. I took modern dance. I thought I was going to be. It was one of the <laughs> hardest classes I took at UNC. Took that. Took Capoeira, Brazilian uh, martial arts. That was an epic class. Oh, that sounds um, but I, interesting. But I graduated in four. So I graduated in 2019 and, and was lucky enough to start my um, MBA. So I, I started that. I'm still working on that right now, actually, in the off season. Okay. I'm just trying to finish my second degree. You doing um, it through North Carolina? That. Through North Carolina, yeah. Doing okay. it online. So shout out to MBA at uh, <laughs> UNC, Keenan Flagler. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> uh, and then, so kind of going from there. Um, so... You're from Miami, and I'm from Indiana, and that means you're a Miami Heat fan, and I'm an Indiana Pacers fan. Fair. So I have an issue with you, but can you apologize to Heat fans for thinking Tyler Hero was worth keeping over James Harden? I can't. I can't apologize to anybody. I got love for my my Heat players. I got love for Hero. I'm diehard man. I was there when we won it, not once, not twice. I've been here since the beginning. My you're favorite there before, player of all time. LeBron? My favorite before LeBron. My favorite oh, player is Udonis Haslam. So if that oh, he's tells the you OG. anything, yeah, the OG. That's my guy. So <laughs> got a lot of love for UD. Got a lot of love for the Miami Heat. So it's all good. But no, no, no knock against you for being a Pacers fan, bro. Hey, I mean, we're, I'm from I'm from Indy. Gotta love my Indy teams. But, got to. You know, yeah, you ca- got I can't. To. You can't be a fair weather. I know. I know people from this area who are like, oh, I'm just gonna follow LeBron wherever. I mean, you gotta stick to your roots, you know. My my brother went to IU, so really, I, I, yeah, he went to IU, so he's a Hoosier. Hell yeah, um, yeah. So they got some good hoops there with the candy stripes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. No Both of us got new head coaches. I got Mike Woodson. You got uh, 
Oh, I'm blanking the name now. Oh, I no. am too. I'm not. I'm not a. I mean, I can't even consider Hubert myself Davis. a. There we go. <laughs> Hubert, yeah. Well, oh, UNC Hubert Davis. I thought you were talking yeah. about Indiana. No, 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 no. I gave the Indiana. Yeah. One. Don't worry. I know. Yeah. That Roy leaving was one of the saddest days for UNC fans everywhere. But hey, you guys got do a great job. I'm I'm so excited for him. And then you got Mac Brown with that team. The football yeah, the, team's in great hands. Gr- yeah, great hands. <laughs> Mac Bino's that guy. Oh yeah, and then Hal's gonna have a breakout year too. Yeah, definitely. He definitely stud. <laughs> He's a stud. And so, going back to the Heat comment, what's your realistic expectations? Because by the time this airs, I mean, they're going to be in the middle of the playoffs. Yeah, I know. Well, shit. Got to say they got to go all the way, huh? All the way again, run it back? Let's run it back. <laughs> okay. And so, one last question. Well, I got two last questions. Number one is you are you also went to the Vikings, and you're in the opposite conference of the Dolphins. Does that make it easier to still chill, cheer for the Dolphins now that you're in Minnesota? You know, I grew up a diehard Fins fan. I got two buddies on the team. My buddy Carl Tucker just signed to them as an undrafted free agent fullback. Hell yeah, and another Jason fullback. Jason Strobridge. Um, Jason Strobridge was another UNC guy who's my buddy. And then I can't forget about Matt Collins. So I got buddies on the Fins. I grew up a diehard Fins fan, but I'm a Viking now, man, through and through. So if we had to play each other, if it ever I mean, came down got, you, to it. Obviously, you're just going to go out there and just try to. Yeah, you got to. So, yeah. I mean, I got, I got, always got to root for the hometown team. But if, but if we're playing them, I'm coming for them, you know? Oh, yeah. So, what about if North Carolina plays Michigan? Going North Carolina? North, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, come on. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, come so, on. <laughs> my, loyalty, last... my loyalty's straight, I promise. Hey, I respect that. Hey, some people yeah. kind of like fray away. They from... bounce around. Yeah. No, yeah. Around. Yeah. I gotta have that loyalty. So, no doubt. And then another, another. Last, this is the actual last question. So, when did you realize you're gonna go from the fro to the flow? The fro to the flow. Oh Dude, yeah. So I don't know if you know, but I cut my wow, my hair. No, looks yeah, for St. Paulics, right? We might have to, yeah. So we might have to cut that out. The hair's not looking too good with the hat hair, but <laughs> um, you know, I just kind of woke up one day. It was time. I grew my hair up for six years. I donated 15 inches to wigs for kids. Um, a pretty cool organization and, and charity. So I was able to do that after the season. I just came home back home to Florida and it was hot. I'm like, wow, I've been in Minnesota. I've been spoiled with the nice weather. Oh, yeah. um, the flow under my helmet was not too bad. Like when I came back home, I was in the heat. I'm like, wow, I might have to cut this. Sweating I figured, bullets. Yeah, sweating bullets is right. So I figured it was time and time for a new beginning and a, a new look. So I, okay. I, uh, I donated it. I'm going to grow it back out, I think. We'll see, though. That was the next question. Where you gonna throw it back? I mean, you got some pretty good flow right now. Yeah, it's, it's coming bad. in. It's, it's coming, coming in a little in. bit. I need I need to fertilize it a little more, but it'll, it'll it'll come back. Fertilize? What do you mean by fertilize? You know, you just like when you grow grass. I mean, it's not gonna grow unless you fertilize it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, that's all I got for you, man. I really appreciate you taking time right, out Tommy, of your day. Yeah, to... no doubt. Thank you for thank you for having me on, man. I really uh, appreciate anytime. it. Anytime. And since you are the second guy I've ever interviewed, whenever I want you to come back on, you have to come back on. No doubt, man. Hit me up. I'm always here. (laughs) All right. Sounds good to me, man. Appreciate it. All right, man. Appreciate you.